Way. 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 Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's a CJ. It's going to be episode four in my series, Filming Your Reef Tank with Your Phone. If it's your first time watching, highly recommend go back and watch episodes one, two, and three. We covered a lot of information as far as stabilizing your camera, you know, adjusting your lighting, which is a biggie, and then also dealing with the features on your phone to help you get those high quality shots. That's exactly what I'm doing in this video, just gathering all the footage necessary so we can go through this tutorial with iMovie. I'm a firm believer, no matter how good you are at editing, if you got bad shots to begin with, your video is never going to come out as nice as you want it. So definitely go back and check it out. So before we get going in this vid, we definitely want to cover this week's shout out. So this week's winner is going to be Equatics. You guys definitely go check out his channel. There's a lot of great tutorials for new people in the hobby. And sadly, he only has like 30 subscribers and the quality of his videos, the information he's given, he deserves a lot more. So you guys definitely go check him out. Show him some love. I'm going to give you guys a quick tour of my studio. I know some of you may have wondered if you haven't figured it out yet. It's just my car. You may be wondering, hey, why are you in your car, CJ? Well, all I do in my car is half the editing. This is where all the magic happens as far as my voiceovers. You guys may have wondered, you know, do I use a microphone or, you know, how do I get it to where it sounds pretty clear? Car is a trick. Now, the reason I'm using my car, basically, it's just an airtight box. If it's not raining and I'm in, you know, at work, most of the times I'm at work when I'm doing this at night, completely quiet. I mean, no echo, no ambient noise. I'm not disturbing anyone. I can talk as loud as I want into the phone and, uh, you know, have a clear thought. You know, if I mess up, I can just redo it and just get it done. So, you know, I do all my editing, you know, at a, in my house or, you know, as far as other places, as far as cropping things. But when it comes to it's time to talk and it's time to do my voiceovers. I do it in my car. So, you know, highly recommend it if you guys don't have anywhere that's quiet, echo free, that you can just speak freely. You know, step out to your car for a minute. You know, say you're going to do some studio time, do your voiceover, and we'll get to it. So, I just want to share that with you guys really quick. So, for those of you that are new to my channel or if you just wasn't aware, I've always used Apple iPhones for my videos, starting with this old 4S. This is the original phone I used to make all of the first videos on my channel. And then I eventually upgraded to an iPhone 5S and then eventually upgraded to the 6S Plus, which is I'm using now for this recording. So just figured uh, I would explain that to you guys. I've always used iMovie and I've started off, you know, with the older versions and the older phones and just kind of, you know, upgraded as I went. So as far as tutorial sake, this is not as, you know, as high quality as the 6S Plus, but it runs iMovie just the same, at least for the most part. And it'll definitely be enough to give you guys a quick tutorial to show you the basics. Quick tip for you guys, especially iPhone users, Android, I don't know if this will apply, but the default settings for your camera and your iPhone are normally never set for the maximum level, especially for recording your reef tank. You wanna make sure it's set for at least 1080p, 60 frames per second. Now this old 4S, it can't do that, but the iPhones, the newer 6S and the 6S Plus, they can go all the way up to 4K, 30 frames per second. 4K is nice, but as far as recording the movement in your tank, Highly recommend 1080p, 60 frames per second. It really uh, catches the movement of your fish and your corals without blurring them out, keeps them nice and crisp, exactly what you need. Not to mention, when we're dealing with iMovie, when it's time to upload, you have to select the resolution you wanna you know, set it for, and you always wanna make sure you're uploading at the same resolution that you're recording. If you mix, you know, if you mix and match and mess it up, you're not gonna get the quality uploads you're looking for. So that may cause you some issues down the road. Just wanna make sure I mention that to you. Now, I do want to answer this question because I get asked a lot, you know, where do I get the songs for my videos? And this is it. I basically just go to iTunes. Luckily, iMovie allows you to use any song or any album that you have on your phone. So you, I know some of you have huge playlists on your phone. Me, I just have a phone full of instrumentals because that's all I use them for is for my videos. So if so far, I think I got about 45 or 50 songs that I can use that I've accumulated. Some of them cost 50 cents, some 60. I mean, they're pennies on the dollar. But, you know, if it's a good beat that's going to go good with your video, go ahead and download it. Now, I will caution you, YouTube sometimes will flag my videos for copyrighted content. All they do is normally just allow, uh, you know, make sure I allow them to run a commercial, which is fine with me. You know, I like the music. I like it. I think it makes my videos enjoyable. So I'm going to keep doing it. So, you know, just something I want to answer for you guys, just in case you want to know.
Now, by no means is this some kind of paid promotion for iMovie. It's just a simple app for editing that I discovered a few years ago. I believe I paid five or six bucks for it, so you still have to pay for it. But once you do, you're allowed to get any free updates. You know, every new phone you get, you get all the new features and everything that comes with it. So pretty neat. I just want to make sure I mention that before we get into it. Now, at the beginning of this video, that time lapse was basically me recording the tank. I took the old iPhone 4S, did the best I could because this camera really, you know, after using my new phone, it really is a step backwards. But for tutorial's sake, I was able to get some good footage, you know, got some movement shots, some close ups, you know, a few different angles. It'll be great for us to make a basic video. And that's basically what we're going to do. You know, I spend sometimes, you know, two or three hours editing my videos to make sure I have them looking the way I want them. But for tutorial's sake, you know, that's just not realistic. So I'm just going to give you guys a quick basic look at the features and um, how to put together a basic video. And then if you have any questions at the end, you know, we may do a part two to this. That I can go into more detail and some of the more advanced things in, the, in iMovie. Now, I know some of you all may already know what iMovie is and this may not really interest you. But anyone that's new, it does have a trailer option besides normal videos. It's kind of a template, you know, it asks you to insert, you know, two second clips, one second clips, you know, different short clips, and then it puts it all together for you, basically pre-edits it for you, and then gives you a, you know, a quick 30 second trailer. Some people have used this, I've seen on YouTube, you know, it's turned out well for them. Me personally, you know, I don't really like it. I like uh, to make my own original videos from the beginning, you know, editing from scratch. So that way I feel like I made it and it's exactly the way I want it. Now, as far as making your own movies, normally what you want to do is just go to the movie instead of trailer. It gives you a few different uh, themes as far as making your videos. Personally, uh, it doesn't matter to me. I don't really use any of the themes, but if you want to select one that's easier for you, go ahead. It just pretty much gives you an idea of how it's going to look as far as, you know, some of the subject lines and some of the title bars maybe in different places. Me personally, I always kind of stick with the same one. Just makes it easier. Just what I'm used to. Now, I'm not going to read them all off to you. Hopefully you guys can see them, but I do want to draw your attention to the undo or the redo button. Definitely the best one that I'll recommend you guys learn and use. Not only does it let you undo your first mistake, but if you hit it, keep hitting it. It'll keep undoing every change you made, I believe, for the last two or three moves. I've never went past that, but it may even go further. Definitely something I recommend. Another thing I recommend is always make sure that you fade in and fade out your beginning and ending. You know, it's just something to help your transitions be smoother when you first start to end your videos. It's not on by default. I wish it was, but highly recommend you guys check that out as well. Now, I normally make my videos in this mode here, but if you guys like turning your phone sideways, it does change the perspective on your editing. It actually shows you more options as far as, uh, you know, what's available, especially if you have questions. I'm going to turn it to the side for you. And you can tell it gives you a lot more explanations as far as what button does what. So it just may be a quick tip for anyone that's still learning. You know, I already know what everything is, and I just found it easier to, you know, use the phone vertically instead of horizontally. So just something I want to share with you guys as well. Let me give you guys a second kind of read through it. But I do want to draw your attention to the record button, the audio button. That's basically all you need for your voiceovers and then the uh, the button for adding media. That's basically how you're going to access the library of all the videos and photos in your phone. That movie will allow you to insert any and both actually in multiple ways. And we'll kind of go through it. But like I said, there's so many features. It will take so long to go through everything. But, you know, we're going to touch on a few. Now, this does allow you to go through and sort your whole library. You can actually look from oldest to, you know, to newest or newest to oldest. Comes in handy. You know, in my situation, I have the largest uh, iPhone 6S Plus, 128 gigs. So I got clips dating all the way back to August, I believe. I mean, you're talking maybe 200 different clips, some short, some long. And I really kind of, you know, it really comes in handy, especially if I want to look at some cool growth or Put a video together that you know i can actually show you all a before and after like algae issues or if a coral looked good before it's dead now really comes in handy so you know if you are going to have a phone try to get as much memory as you can especially for recording purposes because you know it's always good to be able to go back and reference those things instead of talking about it showing it yourself it does come preloaded with a few different theme songs personally i've never used them i've always just used the songs i've downloaded so basically just go into songs, you can sort by album or, you know, just list them like this. As you can tell, I haven't downloaded them all to this phone. They're all in the cloud, but it just gives you an idea of what I can go through as far as choosing songs for which one, you know, I want to use on my video. 
sometimes I use multiple songs in one video. Sometimes I don't use anything. So, you know, I just like having options available. It's nice to be able to pick what you want. Now there's a huge tip I'm gonna recommend everyone does with iMovie. Some may know this, some may not, but if you're gonna add music to your video, go ahead and add it first. The reason I say add it first is whenever you add individual clips to iMovie, especially video clips, any of the background noise is automatically gonna be turned on by default. So you have to go through and individually mute every clip if you plan on doing voiceovers later. So, you know, just save yourself the trouble. You know, once you get to 10, 20, 30 different clips in one movie, it's easy to forget to mute something. And then, you know, when you upload it, you'll hear your audio come through. You'll have your voiceover. And then all of a sudden your voiceover will go silent. And then you'll hear the background noise from that clip. It completely ruins it. So don't let that happen to you. Just go ahead and add your song first. Even if you don't plan on using that song, you can always change it later. At least all your clips will be muted to begin with. Now, this definitely is a cool feature, this preview feature. I highly recommend you guys use it. Instead of going through the trouble and adding a clip to your project, only to find out that it's not the one you wanted, Go ahead and watch the preview to make sure it's what you need. You know, that way you can just save yourself some time. Now, once you click, there's a subset of options you can choose. The first one I'm gonna show you, this is pretty neat. If you just happen to have, you know, something you said on a video, but you didn't want to see the picture, you select that option, it'll automatically add it. Now, I chose the wrong option here, but that undo button will remove it for me. And then uh, we'll keep going back. But it gives you a few different options. One is, you know, overlaying video over top of a video. The second one there is picture in picture. And the third actually gives you options as far as um, putting videos side by side. And you can edit these after you add them to your project, which is cool as well. But that's pretty much all you get with it. You know, it's pretty simple, but you know, with simple things, it makes it easy to manipulate and, you know, to do the things you want. It has its limits, but as far as my purposes, it's done the job. So for anyone new, a quick tip I'm gonna give you if you're having problems trying to figure out where to start your video or what scene to use first, just use the best shot you took. You know, even if you plan on using it later, you can come back to it. The point is, you wanna set the hook. You know, you wanna throw the bait out there, let someone see your video and that first scene should catch their attention and that's gonna make them watch the rest of it, at least go a little further than the first clip. So the hard part's over. You know, you got your first scene up, maybe two scenes up. So now you gotta decide how you wanna handle your intro. You know, a lot of you guys already have intros in mind and you know things that you play on every one of your videos hey that's wonderful unfortunately i don't have that luxury so i gotta decide you know do i want to lead in with my voice or do i just want to put a simple title up and just roll with it there's options available on imovie that let you do both and i'm gonna kind of show you which ones are available for you so if you decide to do subtitles that's perfectly fine just keep in mind when you add a subtitle it does the whole clip and it does not stop to the end of that clip so if you want to make it shorter Use the scissors and split the video. Now it shows you how far you split it. And if you don't like where it is, that's where that undo button comes in. So really easy, really quick. I know I'm flying through it pretty fast, but that's just how easy it is. I mean, if you do something wrong, if you delete a video by mistake, just like I just did, undo button, takes you right back to where you were and it's all good. Now, depending on how old your phone is, you may have the option to slow down your video like the 4S gives you, but my 6S Plus, I can slow down and speed up videos really comes in handy so let's say i filmed a time lapse video and then went to edit it did a voiceover and it wasn't long enough i can slow it down just long enough to where it covers what i said before i go to the next scene so really really useful and that's actually something i used at the beginning of this video for that time lapse you know i just needed a few more seconds i slowed it down and that was it so you know definitely recommend take advantage of what's here available to you it'll really save you some trouble now regarding subtitling kind of give you guys two things to think about uh, I guess tips if you want to call it that. You know, you really want to weigh, is my title more important than what I'm trying to show behind it? So for example, this coral, if I wanted to name this coral, it'd be much better to put it on the bottom left instead of blocking the whole view of the coral with the name of it, really wouldn't make sense. Now, if it's something really important that I want to overrule what you're seeing, then put it in the middle. You know, that's something to consider. Next thing to consider is the background color. Some of these subtitles are clear, white letters, you don't want to put that on a white sand bed in your video. It makes it really, really difficult to see. You may want to use a different kind of subtitle that has a black, ground, you know, a black background behind it. And some of them do in iMovie. So those are just things to consider whenever you're uh, you know, creating your subtitles. Weigh those options. And then if you can't decide, you know, sometimes it's better just to leave no title at all and just roll with it. Now, when you get used to editing and filming your videos, you start to plan ahead, especially for your subtitles. You know, for example, this purple torch. 
I know for a fact this angle allows me a large area on the bottom left. It's completely dark, and if I put white letters against that, it's gonna be a high contrast, it's gonna be really easy to read. So I filmed it this way, just in case I wanted to subtitle it later. So you will really start thinking about those small things whenever you're filming your videos. You know, consider it. You know, those, those are things that make your life easier when you're editing. And you know, the more videos you do, the more you'll kind of do those things and it'll easier to get. So if you didn't notice, we're just now getting past the first clip. It literally took that long. And that's pretty much how long it takes to edit your movies. You know, if you're gonna do it the right way, take your time, don't rush it. So when it comes to transitions, there's really not a right or wrong way to do it. Our movie gives you multiple ways of, you know, doing the same thing. So, you know, you can either skip it all together or you can kind of fade it left and right. Now I will uh, give you one bit of advice. I highly recommend you select your transitions before you do your audio. You know, let's say you did two different audio clips that were back to back and later you decided to change your transition as far as from half a second to two seconds. That's gonna shorten the video a second and a half before it. It's gonna throw your audio off. You got to reline up everything and it makes it a pain. So, you know, highly recommend if you're gonna do your transitions, do it before you change anything as far as any voiceovers. Now, I know Brian, you asked me how to uh, Brian's Fish Tank, shout out to you, man. Uh, one, of, one of your questions were, how did I fade myself from being in no picture to in the screen? It was just this transition. You know, it's the, it's the time you take. Um, when you blend them together and you set it for, you know, two seconds, just like that, it blends. If you have the same background as stationary, you can make yourself appear out of thin air. So, hey, that answer was for you. I remember you asked me how to do that. I'm sorry I didn't, um, you know, record a clip on this phone to show you, but in a nutshell, that's how it happens. So that's pretty much gonna cover transitions. I mean, we can spend a lot of time on this and I don't want this video to drag out longer than it needs to be. So I'm gonna kind of roll through this a little faster and start adding scenes. Now you're gonna notice I have a certain way I like to do things as far as mixing things together. You know, I don't want scenes to be too long. For example, uh, you know, if you're gonna talk on a video, there's a big difference between a a tank update for me and a tank tour you know a tank tour i'm not really talking much it's just straight short shots you know maybe matching it to a beat in a certain rhythm and i just roll with it now if i'm going to do a tank update i'm going to have longer shots stationary focusing on what i want to talk about it may even be some random clips that happened during the week that i just kind of gathered you know you know we're just kind of saving for you guys so it's really depending on the type of video i'm planning on making and I advise you guys to try to decide that when you're making your videos, you know, you can mix and match. You may, maybe you can do a tank update and a, and a tour at the same time, but just understand that, you know, you're trying to accomplish two different things and your footage and your clips should be edited accordingly. Now, just kind of remind you guys, I'm actually filming this video with my iPhone 6S Plus and I'm using iMovie to edit it. So I'm showing you how to use iMovie while I'm using iMovie. So certain features as we go, I'm just kind of point out to you. For example, right now, I'm actually speeding this video up. You know, I'm trying to hurry it along because this is pretty boring at this point. You know, I'm just adding scenes to this video. But that's gonna show you the value of, you know, using different features that are available in iMovie to kind of get your point across and keep your video moving as fast as it can. Now I will say, you know, everyone has their own style. There's no right or wrong way. By no means am I trying to, you know, tell you guys how to edit your movies. Just understand it should match your personality. You know, your own speed of your voice. If you talk fast or talk slow, if you like slow or fast music, rock and roll, you know, R&B, have your music and your videos and you match, you know, have it all go together. And what I will recommend that, you know, if you are switching between different transitions and scenes, you know, don't have two things on the same side, create movement with your video. You know, if you're gonna start on the left side, find a way to work up to the right side in a creative way, either with movement shots or maybe you just zoom over there really fast or just, you know, switch that side of the tank. Whatever you do, keep your videos creative keep movement and also have your viewers feel like they're going on along with you you know on a ride that that they don't know which way it's going to go so keep it unpredictable and it'll make your videos a lot more enjoyable and there is one pretty neat feature i want to share with you guys in iMovie as you can tell each one of these clips has an orange bar going across the bottom of it and it's at different lengths basically that signifies how much of that clip i'm using in my actual movie so as you can see you know i'm using maybe half a clip here and there that comes into play if you're really trying to avoid recycling clips through your movie, which I try to avoid at all costs. I want every clip to be fresh and new. So if I use half of one in the beginning of the movie and, you know, towards the end, I want it to add an additional 20 or 30 seconds, then I can take some of this footage, maybe crop it in the middle, add it to the end of my movie, 
and it's actually still fresh footage. So just kind of keep that in mind so you can keep track of what you've used. That'll really help you. So we're gonna speed this up again. And you may notice I'm shortening all the videos. It's really not the time that's important I want you to pay attention to, but it's the rhythm. You know, have a rhythm with your videos. The more sporadic it is, the less it kind of makes sense to the viewers when they're watching. Let's say you got a 10 second clip followed by a 30 second clip followed by an 18 second clip followed by a three second clip. It really has no rhythm and it's not gonna match anything with your voice or the song you're playing with the video. I mean, any, none of that's gonna match. So what I recommend, there's not a certain amount of time that matters, but just have some uniformity with your, with your clips as far as how long they are. And then if you make a change, you don't have to make a big change. You know, if you go four seconds, four seconds, four seconds, then go six seconds, that two seconds feels like a lifetime for someone who's watching it. So just be mindful of that whenever you're making your videos and just try to keep it enjoyable. So, you know, like I said, no right or wrong way to do it. I have my own certain way of doing things. And, you know, I guess I'm going a little much here as far as sharing with you all exactly how I do things. But I feel like it's information you all can use. And the way I feel about it, I can give you my camera, my tank, and leave you alone in a room, and you will end up with something completely different that I would create because everyone's mind's different. So that's the beauty of this hobby. And that's the beauty of editing, you know, with everyone having the same software and phone available these days, you know, and everyone's still coming up with different ideas and different ways of doing things. So it's part of the best things, and that's one of the main reasons I want to share this. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we created. I say it wasn't half bad. It might need a little more tweaking, but this iPhone 4S, I say it did pretty good. I don't know how the footage will look on YouTube, but I may upload it. Hey, who knows? If you guys want to see what it looks like on YouTube, let me know in the comments. I'll actually upload it. I'll probably unlist it, and only the people who watch this video will be able to see it. I'll put a link in it for you. So just let me know what you guys think. But you know, we got everything recorded. So now let's go to the audio because that's a whole different story. Now, one really neat thing about iMovie and voiceovers is a decimal meter. That really lets you know if there's any ambient sound around you. So if you're just quiet in the room, it should just be one bar. If you got anything showing on that bar, it lets you know that you're gonna have something behind your voice and it's really gonna affect the quality of your sound. So just be mindful of that. Now I'm recording this, this is not in my car obviously. So you can see, even when I'm not talking, there's noise in the background. And that's what I mean by, you know, echoes. And that's what I mean by ambient noise. It really affects your quality. So be mindful of it. Now, another big tip I can give you guys is something I had to learn the hard way. Don't try to do your whole video on one voice and one breath. Somewhere along the line, you're going to make a mistake. You're going to stutter. You're going to mispronounce a word. And then you're going to be like, damn, you know, I got to start over. And then you got to erase a whole, you know, four minutes worth of you talking. Or you got to try to crap it out. The best thing I suggest, have a topic that you want to talk about for a few sentences. Record that and stop. And then start over again. You know, take a breath, collect your thoughts. Lay down, lay down your next portion. You know, I've really found that that helps your videos uh, flow a little better. It helps you stay on topic and it, you know, it helps you stop from rambling and having to go back and edit it later. So definitely uh, be mindful of that. 
that'll really improve you know your voiceover and how you sound when you make your videos now if you were paying attention this is kind of the process i take i watch the video you know i edit it get my transitions and i watch it I may even watch it once or twice make sure i have my scenes just as long as i want them then i do my voiceovers just like i mentioned before if you're going to do multiple voiceovers they're going to string together and if you come back later and decide to edit a scene maybe shorten a clip or change your transitions your voiceovers are going to overlap and it's going to be a pain to get them to kind of match up again to where there's not a space keep in mind if you have music on your voiceovers if there's a space between each one you will have a flare-up of volume meaning your music will get really loud and then go down again as your voiceover comes back on that's something you want to avoid now last but not least you know, i consider this very very important regarding your voiceovers be mindful of the volume you know your music some music tracks are louder than others so you may want to go in click on the volume of the track turn it down you know the default may be too loud and before you know it your voiceover will be getting drowned out by the music and that's really not something you want to deal with so you know definitely don't make that mistake watch your videos multiple times after you do your voiceover listen to it through headphones through speakers even listen to it on youtube after you upload it before you go public and make sure it all sounds good because sound on a video will come back and bite you and that's not something you want to deal with so you got the movie done it's time to upload from iMovie I figured I wanted to show this part because there's a few things that I had to learn how to work around that were a little annoying one is this damn keyboard whenever you go to iMovie to upload a video once you start typing the keyboard is like permanently stuck you can't hit done or okay to to get rid of it so uh, what I found you need to do if you take your finger and kind of focus on the gray areas it actually will let you scroll so that way you can get rid of the keyboard and get to where else you need to go so i find that as a problem with anything you select so be mindful of that second thing i want to remind you beginning of this vid we made sure the camera was set for 1080p you see this is where it comes into play you have to select what resolution you want to upload to youtube if you're recording in the wrong resolution and you upload in the wrong resolution it screws your video up so just be mindful of that don't make that mistake and don't forget about it now at this point you know you can title your video set the category for whatever you want but I do recommend that you start off private because these days you may want to add some extra things to it, some annotations or, you know, some uh, cards, linking your other channels, whatever you want to do. Better to have those things private. Also, when you upload to YouTube, if you all was not aware, your videos do not upload HD right away. It takes time for YouTube to process it, even though it's public and available. So those first 20 or 100 viewers that see it may only see 320p, not HD like you want. That's not what you want. You know, you took your time to make it HD. Make sure, make sure by the time you hit public, it's ready to go. It's HD. You got all your annotations ready. You got all your, you know, your description ready. You got everything ready to go. So when it's public, you know, everything's good. And the last tip I'm going to give you guys, you know, you got it uploaded, ready to go. Be in a situation to where you're not going to have to use your phone. I almost recommend, you know, finishing all your calls, talking to all your loved ones before you do your upload, and then set your phone in airplane mode. Turn on your Wi-Fi or airplane mode. That way you stop any chance of anyone calling you, you know, anything messing up or disrupting your upload because this iMovie app, it does not work well in the background, especially while it's uploading and it can get interrupted and get corrupted and, you know, it just go all bad. You can waste hours of your life with a failed upload. So just be careful of that. You know, there's a few things about iMovie I don't like and that's one of them. So we got the movie uploaded and we're good to go. And that's pretty much going to cover my tutorial on iMovie. And like I said, there's tons of features, tons of things that we can go over. I could spend hours and hours and hours talking about it. But for tutorial's sake, hopefully you guys learned something. And I try to put as many tips as I could as far as my personal experiences. And hopefully that puts you guys over the edge or, you know, encourages you guys to try it out yourself. So with that being said, it's going to conclude my series on recording your reef tank with your phone. And my hope is somewhere along the way in these four episodes, you learned something, picked up a tip and trick that was useful or, you know, just got motivated to record or document your take for the first time in the hobby so i do ask if you guys can hit the poll in the top right let me know which episode benefited you the most i would really like to know that information so other than that hey you guys like comment subscribe you guys do what y'all do y'all be easy